There is more to this than meets the eye. Yes, it's a clutch pedal, but it's quite special. For one, just how much use this one has had, yet it's still in one piece and it works well, albeit not quite as well as it did when it was new. And also, it's an ingenious piece of design to try and help the driver change gear smoothly. It changes its weight when you get near the bite point, so it's easier for you to tell when you're at the clutch bite point. So in this video, I'm gonna strip it down, dismantle it, show you what has survived and what hasn't, and I'm gonna let you know how it works. Firstly, I need to clarify just how much use this clutch pedal has had. It's been in this learner car for 10 years and it's covered over 208,000 miles or about 330,000 kilometers. Now you may be thinking, lots of cars do that these days and you're right, it's not the norm. Most cars are scrapped long before that mileage in Great Britain at least, but it is very possible for a car to go that far or much further. But this car has not done mostly motorway miles. Not much of the miles have actually been on the motorway. Neither has it been driven around town normally. It's been used by people who are learning to drive. People get in this car and use this clutch pedal to practice how to use it. And I would estimate that per mile driven, this clutch pedal has been used four to five times more than a typical town driven car. Not motorway car, but town car. So really, this pedal has done the equivalent of around about 800 to 1 million miles or 1.6 million kilometers. I'm surprised it hasn't turned to dust. I was expecting it to a long time ago. In fact, bits of it have, and I'll get to that soon. Firstly, I'm gonna show you how this clutch pedal can help you change gear smoothly. But before I do that, you need a basic understanding of how the hydraulics work. Only a basic understanding though, so this won't take long. This is the clutch pedal. When you press it down, which is that way, it forces hydraulic fluid out of this master cylinder. They actually use the brake fluid as the hydraulic fluid. That hydraulic fluid goes through this pipe and pushes on the slave cylinder. So the master cylinder pushes the slave cylinder. The slave cylinder pushes the clutch release bearing which pushes the clutch diaphragm fingers that way on the pressure plate, which then brings the pressure plate back this way. So how does pressing on these diaphragm fingers that way bring the pressure plate back this way? Well, look at my fingers. If you push the top of my finger this way, it brings my thumb back. You see how that works? And that is how pushing on the clutch can actually bring the clutch pressure plate back and release the clutch. The clutch is now disengaged, but these fingers are strong. The moment you let off the clutch pedal, they want to return to their rest position. So I'll demonstrate that now. When you let off the clutch pedal, you are no longer providing force to the pressure plate. So the pressure plate springs back to normal, pushes back into the clutch, that re-engages the clutch to the engine. The fingers also press the release bearing back which pushes the slave cylinder back and the fluid goes back down the pipe into the master cylinder and pushes the pedal back up to the top. So you don't actually need a spring on your clutch pedal to get it to return to the top when you let off the pedal. The diaphragm spring will do that for you on the clutch pressure plate. The spring on this clutch pedal is there for clutch feel. This is the over center spring and watch how it compresses when I press the clutch in a little bit. And if I let go of the clutch pedal, the clutch pedal springs back up to the top. But also notice how it's pivoting. Now if I press it down enough, so it's about halfway down, so the clutch is near the bite point now, you can see the clutch isn't springing back up to the top or the bottom, it's staying still. And that's because the spring is only acting on the pivot point of the pedal. It's not pushing this up or down. And you need to push this bit up or down to move the pedal. If I was to lift the pedal up slightly, you can see this bit goes down, and when this is able and got enough angle on it to push that down, it's gonna bring the pedal up quite quickly. And if I was to go halfway again, it's gonna stay still, so halfway's about there. And if I go slightly beyond halfway, it's gonna push this up, forcing the pedal down, like so. And I nearly tracked my thumb there, keep my thumb on the outside of that, that was close. So, you don't want your pedal to fly down like that, but it won't. If this was attached to the car, you'd always have an upward force on this pedal from the clutch pressure plate. This is how it will behave if it's attached to the car. What the over center spring does is it makes the clutch pedal heavier at the top. When I get to the bite point, 
it's noticeably lighter. And when I press the clutch all the way down, it's lighter still. This makes it easy for me to push the clutch down to change gears, but also it makes it easy for me to hold the clutch down for a few seconds if I'm waiting to pull out of a junction because it's not very heavy down here. As I lift the clutch up, when I get to the bite point, it gets noticeably heavier. That confirms to me that I'm at the bite point, not just the vibrations of the engine or the fact we're moving, but I've got a difference in the weight of the pedal to make it easier for me to judge where that bite point is. And then when I'm above the clutch bite point, the pedal is heavier yet, confirming that the clutch is now done, don't rest on it. Not all clutch pedals have a system like this. Some are linear, so they're the same weight at the top of the pedal as they are at the bottom. Some are heavy all the way throughout, some are light all the way throughout, some are in between. Some are super light at the bottom and really heavy at the top. So as you get near the bike point, the pedal wants to throw you off. I haven't driven a car like that for a while, but I did drive some 90s Renaults that were like that. I like a clutch pedal to have a little bit of feel, just a little bit firmer near the bike point, just to communicate to me that I'm there. I don't need it, but it's nice, and it certainly makes it easier for people who are learning to drive. Now it's time to strip this thing down to see how worn it is after so much time. This is the main pivot point of the clutch. As you can see, it's where it pivots, and you can see ooh, quite a lot of white dust in here from the nylon bearing. If I put my finger on it, you can see there, look, white bearing dust. There isn't actually a huge amount of play. There is a little bit but I think there's years of life left in that yet. Where this is really worn is this pin here. This pin is the pivot pin for the master cylinder. I don't think the pin is worn very much, but the bush that goes around it, I think that's turned to dust. There's quite a lot of white dust down there. You probably can't see that. So I'm gonna take it out to show you, but the problem is when I push the clutch down, I can press it that much before it actually starts to press the master cylinder in doesn't affect how the car drives, it just means the clutch pedal doesn't feel very nice because when you press the clutch pedal down, it's not really smooth. There's like a little step of dead travel before it then actually starts to work. To take the master cylinder out so we can see how worn it is or how worn that bush is, I need to squeeze these two cotter pins in and push them out and squeeze these two tabs of the pivot pin in and push that out too. And then hopefully the master cylinder will come out the back and we'll see how much of that bush is remaining. So I've removed these two cotter pins and this pivot pin. And you can see there's a lot of wear on this pivot pin. And in fact, there's a lot of black plastic on it as well, which suggests that the bush here has worn away and the black plastic of the master cylinder is pushing against this. And there's a lot of white dust about from the bush. I believe that bush has turned to dust. Let's take this out and have a look at the bush. Oh yeah, look at that. Can you see that? how worn away that bush is. There's bush at the top, but not really much at the bottom. And in fact, I can see some black plastic there and some black plastic in there as well, which explains why there's black plastic on this pin because it's been pushing against the black plastic instead of the bush. This should be snug and it's not. It moves around, this does pivot as it should, the um, bush, but look how much play there is in that pin. I can move the pedal a lot before it actually starts to move the piston. So this pin is connected to the pedal. When you move the pedal, this pin moves and it moves the piston. And there's a lot of play there before the piston moves, which explains why the pedal felt so bad. Now you could say that this should be made out of metal and well, maybe you're right, but then it would squeak. You could grease it, but that would dry out and you'd need to re-grease it again, which means taking this off the car to get to it. Because you can't re-grease it when it's attached to the car. And Taking it off and putting it back on is probably about three hours for someone who knows what they're doing. So a lot of people aren't going to bother that and you're just going to end up with a squeaky pedal. So I'm actually quite glad it's made of nylon. It does mean it's going to wear out eventually, but most cars, most clutch pedals in most cars are never going to see that amount of use before, well, they're scrapped for some other reason. So I think overall it's quite a good design, but I just do an abnormal amount of use. Now I'm gonna see how this has worn, how the bearings here have worn by taking that apart. And to do that, I think I need to twist this this way, which means I need to lift these up at the same time as twisting, then pull it out, and then we'll see what they look like. Okay, so I've twisted this, which did break off one of these, and it did say in the workshop manual that that may break, and I'm gonna pull it out. And 
Ooh, white nylon bearing dust. A lot of it. Let's see if I can get this pedal out now. It should just, oh, there we go. Again, very easy. The dust is falling on the cardboard. These are the bearings. And you can see, actually, I don't know if you can see that there, it's quite clean here. And this isn't worn at all. So this bearing does stay still. This bearing doesn't turn here. It turns here, which is good. It means it only wears on one end. It doesn't actually wear this plastic pedal. So if you wanted to replace this, you could replace these bearings and this pin, and then it will be back like new. And on this side as well, yep, again, this bearing hasn't spun round. It's been fairly stationary by looks things, no wear on it, but a lot of wear on the inside. However, as I said earlier, there wasn't much play in it. It is worn, but not badly. I think there's a lot of life in this left yet. A lot of life left in this yet, should I say. You can see the bearing there, there is a bit of play, but it wasn't affecting the use of the pedal. It wasn't rocking from side to side. Maybe not as good as new, but it could probably do as long as it's done again, I would guess. So not a big problem there. And we've got this part of the pedal here, this bit here, which goes on this over center spring, which has now come out, nice. And that doesn't look very badly worn either. Yeah, there's no grooves worn in here, a little bit, a little bit of a groove, a little bit of groove there, considering the force of this spring as well. It's quite a strong spring. I'm surprised they're not worn more, and this isn't worn away. That still fits in there well and pivots nicely. And then on this bit here, you've got these little bushes. Don't know how to take these out yet. I think I can, I might just have to figure this out and come back to you. These weren't too difficult at the end. They just took a little bit of a technique, squeeze at the back like that, and then they pushed out like so. These sit in here, in these little, holes there to protect this bit of plastic, whilst this sits in there and pivots. And of course this bit's not worn because they're there to protect it, but then these aren't worn either, and neither is this, these little shafts on the end. So I didn't need to replace any of this. In fact, all I was planning to replace was my master cylinder and the pivot pin, including the bush inside the master cylinder. And then I was thinking actually, whilst I'm taking it out, it's probably a good idea to replace any bearings, so any of these bearings and any pins, and maybe even this spring assembly, uh, just in case it is worn, because I didn't know until I got it out. But I ended up buying a whole pedal for 400 pounds. I was thinking all these bits aren't gonna be too much. And I actually had one of these knocking around. Um, so I think I should probably explain why I ended up replacing the whole pedal when all I needed was a few plastic bits and I already had the main bit as a spare anyway. So why is it then I have a spare master cylinder knocking around as you do? Well, it's because in 2017, my slave cylinder failed and I thought it'd be a good idea to have one of these just in case this fails. It's ready to be fitted and there won't be too much downtime in lessons. And my plan was actually to fit it when I have a chance, just to play it safe. Truth is, I had plenty of chances to fit this, but I don't like working down there. I always had better things to do. When I replaced the clutch pedal, my back was sore and stiff for six days and I had scratches all over my arms and putting my arms up in places where I can't see and the sharp things. Still got one scab coming away now. So yeah, I really didn't want to replace this and it was never urgent, but from the last winter we just had, it started to get a bit more urgent because when the car was cold, it started to creak. Like, eh, eh, clutch would creak when the cabin was cold. Once the cabin got warm, the creak went away. So I was thinking, let's just pay someone to fit it and then job done, don't have to worry about it. But then I thought a bit more and thought, what if it's not this that's at fault? Well, obviously this is badly worn, it's been used so much. What if there's something else that's worn? So I had a look under there, put a torch on the pedal, could see a lot of white dust, and I was thinking, yeah, that pedal does need some work. Let's overhaul it completely. Let's get all the bushes and pins and the bearings and give it a, ref a refresh to make sure it's gonna be fine. Went to say it, asked for those parts. No, we can't sell you those parts. We can only sell you this bush for two pounds, but the rest of the parts you can't get. You have to buy a whole new pedal if you want those parts. So I had two options. One was to replace this 
and hope that the pedal was nice and smooth and quiet and risk taking the pedal out twice, which I did not want to do, or replace the whole pedal, brand new, job done in one go. So I decided a bit of a compromise. I thought, okay, I'll buy the whole new pedal, but I'll fit it myself. And the money I'll save in paying someone to fit this, I know I could fit this myself as well, but the way I did it in my head is the money I'll save in paying someone to fit this, I'll put towards the pedal, and I know the job's done in one go. And I'm actually quite pleased because the pedal is so much smoother. I don't remember it being this smooth from new, but also it's quiet, but it's lighter as well. I didn't expect replacing the pedal and the master cylinder to make the clutch lighter, but it has. And when I've been driving a new petrol manual car and I've got back into this one, quite often I feel like they don't really drive much different. They kind of drive the same cars. Petrol manual cars haven't moved on much in the last 10 years. But what I did notice when I got back into this car was how heavy and rough my clutch was. Now it's nice and smooth. So I'm happy I spent the money. I'm happy I did the job. I just need to figure out what to do with this thing. Well, I hope you found the video interesting and how the clutch pedal can actually make it easier for you to feel the bite point and change gear and just how worn a clutch pedal is after that much use. I was certainly very interested in that. I'm glad I replaced it looking at these bits with all this dust. Yeah, probably why this one feels so much better now. If you did find it interesting, give the video a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, then Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy. And that takes away a big stress from the owner of that car that you're using to practice your driving in. Via the link at the moment, there's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, I recommend checking out the link to confuse.com because you fill out one quote form and you get loads of quotes back from many insurers and you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like without changing the whole quote. So it's a quick and easy way to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel. So thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos and until the next one, cheerio.